What do we make of this solitary test for England um, against South Africa, in South Africa? Um, we can talk about this later in the episode about his legacy, but do you think it somehow sullied his reputation as an Austra- one of the great Australian cricketers, captains, literally the captain in the match which formed the Ashes, and here he is playing for the opposition, uh, has that somehow perhaps misrepresented who he was as a person and his reputation as an Australian cricketer? I don't think so. I think by the time he went on this tour, he was sort of forgotten in Australia. Mm. When you look at the fact that he wasn't included initially in the Australian Cricket Hall of Fame and his reputation, do you think that the fact that he was Anglo-Australian and he played one test for England, do you think that was one of the reasons he was... No, there were other reasons, I think, out of sight, out of mind. Right. And um, David Frith said in the preface that Australians didn't like more or less discarding Australia and mm. becoming a, an Englishman. It's a funny tour, though, when you read some of the stories of that tour. You know, it was like one of those early tours by... Um, to the United States or to Australia by the England professionals. You know, there were strange, long journeys by horse and cart and 18-hour trips. Mm. And Getting across flooded rivers and mm. flooded rivers, and sleeping on Sleeping on, yeah, exactly. I think the... Sharing uh, one knife and fork. <laughs> yes. So, oh my God, what a I think that I think the batsmen were allowed to sleep on the tables of this hotel and the bowlers had to sleep on the floor yeah. or something. It's uh, a far cry from what cricketers are. Uh, given these days when they tour. Yes. Sure. 